Hello, welcome to this new Desproto tutorial video. Uh, my name is Lex and I want to continue my tutorial videos about the Deskproto workflow. In the first workflow video I showed you how to use one of the wizards. In this new video I want to address the uh, main user interface. So show you, demonstrate you how you can interact with the program. I will do so using a free edition again, as the user interface is identical for all four editions. The only difference is, as you can see here in the comparison chart shown of our uh, comparison table shown in our website, the only difference is that the paid editions have more features than the free uh, edition. The free edition only offers basic CAM functions. Okay, let me start the Desproto to show you how it works. As said, I want to use, uh, demonstrate the user interface using the free edition. So here in the edition select dialog, I will choose the free edition and continue. Start Desproto. This is the start screen. What you can do is start a new project, open an existing one, many other tasks, some other tasks. Well, in the previous uh, workflow video I showed you the wizard. Now I will show you how to create a pro project without a wizard. Here you can see the three types of projects that you can do in Desproto. A vector project is based on a 2D drawing, curves saved in a DXF, AI or EPS file where the cutter will follow the curves. A geometry drawing is a based on a 3D geometry imported as STL file and a bitmap drawing start, starts with any digital image uh, and that's proud to create, uh, convert the gray value of each pixel, pixel to a Z height and then uh, that will make a 3D relief that can be machined. But however, I will now ignore the start screen and show the Desproto user interface as it is. The view window, tree window, NC files window will cover them all. Uh, okay, we need to start a new project and here you can already see the same three projects that we can start that we saw on the start screen are present here as well. Uh, you see here uh, in my tree you see a geometry operation which means that my default project type is a geometry project. See when I select vector project you will find a vector operation here but I want to use a geometry project. So here we are a new project. Okay, the first thing to do is load the CAD data. Uh, it will be clear it can't be done using the open uh, command file open as using file open you can open Desproto projects that already have been uh, created. We now have a new project so we need to start loading CAD data. In this case I want to load a geometry file. It's in my list of Desproto files and it is the sample uh, geometry called bottle. Here we are. It's a perfume bottle, small perfume bottle and we can look at it from all sides. So this is the thing we want to machine. Uh, okay, how can we influence the view that leads us to these four buttons with mouse functions. We are now on rotating. When I click here the mouse function is panning. When I click here it's zooming and this is also a very useful one, zoom window. Um, same three functions can be found here with the SEMP wheels, zoom, pan, rotate. So it can be very handy to do an exact rotation around one of the axes of the view window and that can be done using those thumb wheels. You can switch them off if you don't like it. Here in the view menu you can remove the thumb wheels. However, I like to have them in view as they show me, okay, this is typically, this is typical desk proto that we're working with. Um, 
in practice I have to say I don't use this as much because when I keep mouse function on this rotation button I can press the middle mouse button which is the wheel and then I have pen and when I rotate the mouse wheel I have zoom so in practice I have all three functions without changing the mouse button uh, the mouse function um, here is a next series of buttons that concern the view we have a number of main views we have the previous view and once we have done previous view we can also return to the last view to, wait, this, to the next view yes that's what I want to say and here you, we can also set a custom viewpoint by entering rotation panning and zooming values this is an interesting one the items visible dialog I can call it uh, using this button I can also call it by double clicking uh, the view window and in this dialog you can decide what needs to be shown on the screen so what needs to be visible so for instance instead of geometry rendered I can say I want to have the geometry as wireframe or rendered with downward faces shown you can already see we have a lot of downward faces but we will address that issue in a moment so far the <coughs> items visible dialog here we can oh I have to switch that off again yes here we have the multiple view the views layout window that we can uh, select two views three views some default views this can be handy for a new geometry to quickly see what we're dealing with I'll switch that back and this is a very interesting one as well the part information dialog it will tell you how large the material block is this orange thing is the material block and the geometry in this case they are the same as the default material block is exactly the bounding box of the geometry this dialog can remain present on the screen while we continue uh, okay here these six buttons these are in fact shown the main workflow in Desproto you need to start with loading CAD data here is load geometry uh, it's a load vector file why doesn't it show the oh here now it shows the <laughs> tooltip this is load vector file this is load geometry file and here we are have load bitmap file so this is the load CAD data this is calculate toolpath I can do it immediately it will lead to a bit weird result but you can see how quickly it goes here is a show simulation when I do that uh, this is simulation of the block and when I also sim calculate the simulation for these this operation we'll see that a very strange <laughs> result will appear so this is not what we want a machine I will come back on that in a moment okay hide the simulation I'll hide the toolpaths as well and this button is the final one is write and then see program file so file containing the exact toolpath information that can be sent to the machine so these buttons for the main workflow and these will be familiar so new project open project and save project okay that's what I want to say about the uh, yes the buttons and the next one to explain is the menu well most menu commands have already been shown in the buttons but here is one this one that needs attention the parameters well as you see as you saw the two path are not yet correct we need to change some settings <coughs> and that can be done on three levels on level of the project level of the part on the part you decide what you want to machine so we need to rotate this in the part parameters to uh, have it correctly machined and the operation parameters decide how it will be machined so which cutter which toolpath distance etc etc 
these same three levels can be recognized in the project tree, the project name, which still is untitled, the part, what we want to machine, and the operation, how we want to machine it. About untitled, it's untitled as we uh, haven't yet saved the project. So if I, when I now save this project, I call it uh, v, no, video test. And you will see that now the project is named video test. Operation parameters, uh, the project parameters here, I can open them this way, but most cases I simply double click on the file. Here are my project parameters. Most important is which machine and the CAD data. Here you can see the SCL file that we, that we have loaded. But okay, in most cases the machine is cor correctly set as your default machine, so no need to use the project, uh, the, uh, project parameters. Part parameters, here we are. Uh, transform is needed as uh, this part needs to be rotated. The cutter on the, the machine comes from the positive Z direction, so as we just saw in the simulation, it's nonsense to machine in this way. We need to rotate 90 degree around the X axis, or I know it should be minus 90 to have it correctly aligned. Here we are. And uh, I also want to say material. I only want to machine the upper half of the bottle. So here we are, material, upper half. OK, here we are. That's the geometry we'll want to machine. That's the part parameters. I will for now ignore the other part parameters. Uh, more details in the other tutorial videos. Same for the uh, geometry operation. Uh, I can make the cutter a bit smaller, 4 mm cutter, toolpath, say about half a millimeter, step size along the toolpath, same. If needed, I can change those. And when I press OK and calculate the toolpath, you can see this looks much better. I can again make a simulation, calculate, uh, switch the toolpath off to show it more clearly. I'll switch geometry off as well. And here we have the half button that we are going to machine. OK, that were the parameters. What more can I need? Uh, can I tell you? Uh, the help button is an important button. Every Desproto dialog has a help button. And when you press that, the help function will come up and give help information on exactly that dialog. So this is a very powerful function that you need to keep in mind and use when uh, you use Desproto. Okay, the final thing as said is uh, saving the toolpath and I can do so using write and see program. It gives a warning. I'll ignore that for now and I say Save it as test test. Yes, it will give a warning without doubt. It already exists, but we can replace that. And now we also see the function of the NC files window. It gives a list of all NC files that have already been saved. Okay, and the final step is take this part to the milling machine. We need to set a zero point on the machine. This is the block and here this blue cube sets the workpiece zero point. Well, we on the machine we need to set the zero point on exactly this left front top corner of the block and then we can make the machine follow the toolpath and create a nice half bottle. Okay, I'll show that after the demonstration. Okay, so far our demonstration, the result of the toolpath that we just generated will be half a bottle, like shown here. When you combine two of these bottles, the result will be one comp complete model, which is an easy way to proceed on a three-axis machine. Alternatives are machine one block from two sides, 
where you use support tabs to keep the model connected to the block. Or you can use a rotation axis, a fourth axis on the machine where the block, the part rotates during machining. Uh, it will be clear that much more can be told about the Desproto software, so I refer you to all other tutorial videos for more details. For now, thanks for watching.